Today we're going to be testing out a trading strategy which uses the MACD or MACD indicator. I'll show you how the strategy works and then we'll look at which markets that it performs best on. We'll be looking at backtest results for 14 of the different Forex pairs and three different time frames for each of those pairs. I'll be using MultiCharts and MultiCharts Portfolio Trader to test out this strategy. Once programmed it allows me to quickly test not only on each of the 14 individual pairs and individual time frames but collectively as a group of forex pairs or a group of time frames as a portfolio. The strategy is pretty simple and in all the tests which we're going to be looking at today we're going to be using the standard settings for the MACD indicator 12, 26 and 9. Of course we could change these to see how the results differ but maybe that's for another video. Looking at the MACD indicator We've got three parts to it. We've got the MACD line, the signal line, or the average of the MACD line, and then we've got the histogram. Our strategy takes signals when the two lines cross each other, or when the histogram crosses either above or below the zero line. So it means trades are going to be really easy to spot on the charts. We'll also be using a stop loss of six times the average true range over the last 20 bars, but this stop loss is rarely going to be hit. Most of the time we'll be exiting a trade because we get an entry signal to go in the opposite direction which we're already in. That stop loss is there more as just a fail safe. Let me show you an example of how the strategy works on the charts and then we can look through the test results. We've got 45 separate tests and we can see which markets it works best on and which it works worst on. Once we're looking at our price chart we want to put on the MACD or the MACD indicator. Here it is down below. You've probably all seen it before. Looking at the two lines for the MACD, like here, you can see that when the lines cross, it also coincides with when the histogram crosses the zero line. So we can see there, we've got a short trade. The histogram goes from positive to negative. So we'll sell short on the open of the next bar. And then we stay in the trade until the histogram crosses from negative to positive which coincides with when the lines also cross. And we'll exit the short trade and we enter a long trade. So really, really simple. The times where this strategy doesn't work very well is times like this when the lines are just a bit choppy and we're getting in and out of trades very quickly. This works best on trending markets where we can see long trends in one direction or the other. Let's just have a look at, see if we can find some better trending periods, uh, like here for example. We've got some bigger, bigger trends here, we've got a short here, and we've got a little, uh, a little cross above, it's a bit hard to see, but a little cross above the zero there, so we had a signal there. But we're back short, we've gone long again as the histograms crossed over the zero, and so on, and we can see that we've got some winning trades here as the histogram either stays positive for a long time or negative for a long time, that's when this strategy will make money. Interestingly, although I've actually programmed my version of this strategy, this strategy you can essentially get as one of MultiCharts' pre-built strategies. There's a whole load of pre-built strategies in MultiCharts which you can apply to any chart. Most of them in their basic form probably won't produce any profit but with a little bit of modification some filters here and there you can get them to work on some markets anyway that's how the strategy looks on the chart i think you'll agree that it's dead simple to spot the entries and the exits i have test data from january 2008 through to the end of april 2023 and the only thing that i'm going to change about this strategy is the time frame I was intending to show you the results for the 60 minute, 240 minute and the daily time frame but I've already done some testing and while the 60 minute chart did produce what looked on the surface as some pretty good results, the size of the average trade was just too small to overcome any trading costs. Instead I'm just going to show you the results for the 240 minute or 4 hour chart, 720 minute or 12 hour chart and daily. Once I've collected all the results for each of the timeframes and the markets, I'm recording them in our Forex strategy database. For those of you who don't already know, we're doing this video series where we're taking a different strategy each time and we're testing it across 14 different Forex pairs. 
I'm documenting and recording all the results into a spreadsheet and I'm giving everybody free access to that spreadsheet so you can access it anytime you want to see what type of strategy works best on what type of market. You can find the link in the description down below if you want to go and access that database. Now let's go and have a look at our results for our first time frame which is the 240 minute or the four hour time frame. Now we're in Multicharts Portfolio Trader and you can see that we've got all the Forex pairs here and we've got data from Oanda. The strategy which I've got selected is the MACD trend strategy which you've already seen on the charts, the one which I've created for these tests. So let's have a look at the back test results. So net profit for the complete portfolio is 10,800. Now all these results you're going to see are in pips. So if we see 10,800, that's in pips rather than the currency. I programmed it that way because then it helps where we've got different currencies across the portfolio. So equity curve for the whole portfolio is pretty bad. It worked sometimes, other periods it worked really bad, other periods it just went sideways. But we're more interested in the individual markets. So here we can see the individual market results. Australian dollar, US dollar didn't work. Canadian yen, Japanese yen showing some positive results. So let's have a look at that. That's what the equity curve looks like. Not great, but maybe you know, it shows some promise. Maybe it deserves looking further into. We've got a low average trade of just under four pips per trade. So that's something that will have to be increased to be able to trade this strategy. Euro pound didn't make a lot of money. Euro yen um, positive didn't make too much money. Let's have a quick look. Equity curves pretty awful. Euro New Zealand lost quite a lot of money. Euro dollar three thousand eight hundred pips and a bad equity curve. Pound Canadian dollar lost massively. Let's have a look at that. Well, maybe this is one of those markets where we flip the rules and maybe trading the opposite rules could be the basis of a money-making strategy for this particular pair. Obviously works terribly the way we've got it at the moment. Pound yen, which actually makes the most money out of the whole portfolio. Although the equity curve's not very good, is it? Pound US dollar. Another bad equity curve. Looks like a lot of the money was made in these early years, 2008, 2009. New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar. Pretty bad. New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Didn't do a lot. US dollar, Canadian dollar. Didn't do a lot. US dollar, Swiss franc. Didn't do much. US dollar, Japanese yen. Made money. And the equity curve is semi doing the right thing. So maybe we could investigate and modify, get something to work a little bit better on this pair. So that's the results for the four hour or the 240 minute. Now let's have a look at the next time frame, which is the 720 minute or 12 hour. Of course, we can pick whatever time frame we want to test, but I just want to keep some consistency across these videos. So now we're looking at the 720 minute or the 12 hour chart. Let's have a look at the results. The complete portfolio uh, makes money. 11,400 pips. Equity curve is better than the last 240 minute chart. Let's have a look at the individual pairs. Australian dollar, US dollar doesn't make money. Canadian dollar, Japanese yen also shows a bit of promise. And equity curves, not bad, probably better than before on the 240 minute. Euro pound loses money, euro yen makes money, equity curve going in the right direction, not, not brilliant though, euro New Zealand not making money, euro dollar barely making money, pound Canadian dollar losing a lot of money, similar to before but not losing as much money, uh, pound Japanese yen very good again, and that's probably probably the best pair so far. What's the average trade value on that? 
we've got a large average trade value at 23 pips so by the time we've paid some trading costs we've still got a, a load of profit there to be had pound us dollar not making much what's the equity curve like not great new zealand dollar canadian dollar losing a lot again another one of those ones where maybe looking at using MACD for reversals might work better. New Zealand US dollar, similar story. US dollar Canadian not doing a lot. US dollar Swiss franc making some money. Equity curves not very good. And US dollar Japanese yen not really making a lot of money at all. So probably the standout pair on the 720 minute is pound yen. So far, we've seen some markets which show some promise, some markets which the strategy worked really bad on and might even benefit from swapping the trading rules around and doing the opposite. And then the other markets were kind of a whole load of inconsistency in between. Next, we're going to look at the results on our last time frame, which is the daily time frame, where we're going to see some of the best results yet. Now, just before we look at those, though, I just want to offer you the chance to access my 22-page Beat the Markets strategy guidebook. In that guidebook, I lay out three more trading strategies which do have decent back tests, and I'll give you all the rules and I'll give you the back test results so you can go and maybe trade them, modify them, do what you like with them. I know it's been really helpful for some of you guys, and if you find the link in the description at the moment, you can get that absolutely free. Even better than that though, you can enroll in my trading course and in the course I'll give you six more strategies. I'll show you how to trade them and you can trade them manually or automated like I do. If you do trade them automated, I actually give away the code. So if you're using multi-charts like I do or TradeStation, then you can get the code and you can import that into either TradeStation or multi-charts and again, modify that or do what you like with that. The links for the course are also down below. Okay, let's have a look at our test on our final time frame. Okay, let's look at the daily or the 1440 minute time frame. Results collectively as a portfolio this time, losing quite a lot of money with an expected bad equity curve. But let's look at the individual markets. Australian dollar, US dollar making a little bit of money. Equity curve is not great. Canadian Japanese yen not really doing much this time. Euro pound losing quite a lot. Euro Japanese yen not really doing a lot. Euro New Zealand dollar losing with a bad or inconsistent equity curve. Euro dollar bad equity curve losing money. Pound Canadian dollars losing a lot of money in quite a nice fashion, it's losing a lot of money. Best one yet though is pound Japanese yen with not a bad looking equity curve at all. So that's probably one of the best we've seen so far. The average trade is large at 34 pips. We've got 300 trades over that 15 or so year period. So I suggest that probably has some potential on that pair. Pound dollar, not really doing a lot. New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar is making money. The average trade is uh, 10 pips, possibly usable. Equity curve is okay. New Zealand dollar, US dollar, not really doing a lot. US dollar, Canadian, losing with an inconsistent equity curve. US dollar, Swiss franc, losing with a bad equity curve. And US dollar, Japanese yen is also losing on the daily time frame. So that's what the dailies look like with a standout per pound Japanese yen. Well, we've seen some good and some very bad results for this trading strategy. The MACD strategy is a trend or a momentum strategy, so it's bound to work better on some of the Forex markets to some of the others. But I'm glad this strategy showed better results than the momentum strategy we were looking at in the last few videos. I don't like sharing completely useless strategies with you guys. I'd much rather share something which you have potential to make money with. So there's a few things which we could do with the results from the testing which we've seen today. On the markets which the basic strategy showed some promise with, we could look at improving upon those. 
We can look at things like trend filters, profit targets, etc., that kind of thing. And then we could look at some of the other markets where the results were absolutely terrible and maybe look at reversing the rules to see if that could be the basis for a strategy on those markets. Because throughout all my testing on the Forex markets over the years, some pairs tend to trend well and some pairs tend to reverse or revert to the mean. I don't believe you'll find one strategy which works equally as well across all the pairs. If there's anything in particular you'd like me to add to this strategy and test out, then please let me know. I'll update our free Forex strategy database and I'll go about preparing the next test results and video for you guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and do me a favour and please give it a thumbs up if you have. I expect I'll see you next time on the next video. But until then, this is Jared Goodwin and thank you.